all, my name is Tom Morgan Jones and I'm the illustrator of a book called Strong, Brave, True, Great Scots Who Changed the World and How You Can Too. And this is the author. My name is Mary Kidd and we know that you probably are stuck at home and you can't go to school. And first of all, when you think you can't go to school, you maybe think, yay! yay. But then after a while, you maybe start to miss your friends. You think, yay! Oh. <laughs> no! Oh. You start to miss your friends and you probably miss your teacher who's probably quite nice, really. And you start to maybe get a bit bored and we thought that you might like, while you're at home, to make your own book. So we thought we would tell you a bit about how we made Strong Brave True so you know how to go about it. What do you reckon, Tom? I think that's an excellent idea. I think more people should make more books. Yes. Well, before I give you Strong Brave Truth, I should tell you, Strong Brave Truth is a, a picture, in a way it's a picture book, um, but it's a non-fiction picture book. It's a hard cover, which is very nice. Uh, it keeps it nice and safe, so it lasts for a long time. And in a picture book, um, what will you call a two-page uh, set of pictures and text like this? is a spread and so I'm going to show you some of the original plans for the spreads of Strong Brave True. Now this is a bit strange though because what did you say you did for the book Tom? Ah oh, I illustrated the book. And I wrote the book but actually when I first came up with the idea of the book I did some little drawings too so initially I kind of thought what, what would be in it and I'm going to show you my little spread plan so if you I don't know if you can see here but this is the plan of all the different people who were going to have a double spread in the book. So, for example, there's John Muir, the father of the national parks in America. Um, there's Will Yamina Fleming. There's Robert Louis Stevenson and the rest of the Stevenson family. Then I've got one here that just says doctors. So that's about Elsie Ingalls, William Hunter, uh, who invented, who discovered penicillin. Alexander Fleming. Um, and so that was my little plan. And I've got lots of other notes here because I'm quite messy. Everything... Uh, was done in one of these notebooks and that's one of my top tips if you want to think about making a book is get one book of paper one note notebook or sketchbook and do everything in there and so Just throw your ideas in it yeah but they all stay in one place so you can yeah. hold them all together so here is the first idea of a sketch of a spread for William and Fleming so here's the ideas of how we would show Williamina Fleming's name and I had an idea here that it should be in stars because she was an astronomer and she uh, studied space and here's a little key here where I've written text A, text B, C and then what I've done is written all the text here. So I just thought I would let you see a few of these and here's my little drawings of Williamina and Charles, uh, Edward Charles Pickering. Tom can we see Williamina and Edward Charles Pickering as they came out in the end? Oh the final ones that I copied from you. <laughs> I didn't draw this, but I just I copied it. There we go. So that's the final spread, double page spread. And we'll let you see. Um, here's the idea for the Stevenson family. So the idea was a lighthouse, and then it would say the Stevenson family in the beam, and down the way it would say they brought light to the darkness in more ways than one. Because as well as building lighthouses, Robert Louis Stevenson was a great writer and he brought lots of light to people's lives. Do you have the final spread for that, Tom? <laughs> finding it. You're finding it. Very Tom's slowly. not finding it. He's just going oh, back and forth in a big panic. There, there we, we go. go. Bingo. Look at that. That's the final spread. With all my colouring in. Yeah, so we'll just let you see a few more. We won't show you the finals for all of them, but you can maybe get hold of a copy of the book. So here's David Hume. Don't know if you can see him there. There he is with his candle. So that's he was a philosopher in the Scottish Enlightenment. And so I, I think we said we weren't going to find him, but Tom's trying to find him. No, we can't. You can't find him. And then we've got <laughs> John Muir, and we've got many, many other characters. And so, ah, there's candle. David Hume and his candle. That's a, can we see that again? John Muir, okay. Can, you know, can we see David Hume again? That's a really nice uh, picture to look at if you want to think about if you want to put light in your drawings, if you can see what Tom's done there, is he's left a big bit white and then he's drawn round it with yellow and he's put some uh, little dashes of orange in there. So that white looks so bright with the coloured background on the page. I'm going to show you another couple. Tom, you don't need to show everybody um, yours. Just And then I'll, I'll, what I'll tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about your pictures, Tom, only my pictures. Really. Um, that's to let you see Charles Rennie Macintosh and Margaret Macdonald Macintosh. And so then we thought we'd like to tell you about how we came up with the text and the ideas. 
we were lucky because there was no coronavirus, so we were able to go all over Scotland to, for example, we went to the house where Charles Rennie Macintosh and Margaret MacDonald Macintosh lived. It's not where it used to be. The house was demolished, and so it was it was preserved, and all the interiors and even the outside walls were taken to Glasgow University and rebuilt so that you can go into their house. It's a little bit creepy, isn't it? It's, it is amazing. As well, yeah. But you kind of think that they might walk in any minute, even though they've both been dead for a very long time. Um, and then we did lots of research with books. So I had lots of books, for example, about Charles Rennie Macintosh and Margaret MacDonald Macintosh. And we also used the internet. So, for example, I found out that Margaret MacDonald Macintosh's picture, the red rose and the white rose, uh, the most money ever paid for a Scottish picture was paid for that picture. And I was able to find lots of those facts on the internet. So maybe if you want to create a book while you're at home and you've got lots of time to fill, you could find out about something you're really interested in. And then you could think about ways to do some pictures based on your facts that you've found. So Tom, do you want to tell us then what you did? Yeah, I copied what you did. <laughs> That's what I That's did. That's not true. <laughs> So I was doing the drawings with my dip pen. I don't know, you can draw with anything, can't you? Pens, pencils, anything. It's always fun. Um, and I use a dip pen, so I quite like that. Cause it, I use the, like an old feather quill, but it's a metal one, and you dip it in a pot of ink, and then you scratch away, and it gets a bit messy, and it can flow around the place. And I quite like that. So here was a picture I did. There's Julia Donaldson. She's the author of The Gruffalo and many other children's pitch books. So, and then, because I often draw pictures and I get them wrong and I make mistakes and that's all part of drawing. Right, all these, I uh, did a bit of a wobbly line there, shouldn't be there. But if you can see that, I just, when I scan it into my computer, I just tidy it up and then change it for the final book. So that's a, that's a good thing about drawing is if, you, if it goes slightly wrong, just draw another picture next to it. Same with writing. You can always just put a line through a sentence and start again. Yeah, I, I did it here. I drew a head. Wasn't that happy with it? I drew another head next to it. So there we go. Who's that, Tom? So this is an Italian artist. No, he's not. He's a Scottish artist. Uh, an no, Italian he's, Scot. He's an Italian Scot. Sorry. Yes. Eduardo right. Polozzi. Yes. And then next to him is Alistair Gray. So there we go. Alistair Gray, who is an author and an artist and very sadly died last Christmas. He did, yes. If you're watching this in 2020. In 2020. But Tom, these pictures are all in black and white. Yeah. And the pictures in the book are in colour. They are. So <laughs> I uh, colour them in, in the computer. Ah, as if by magic. As if by magic. So you scan them in and then you tidy them up. I tidy up all my silly lines that I don't want and I change it around. And if I like, uh, see... Um, she was all right, turned out all right. I didn't like the start there, but then I thought that was nicer. So I'd scan that in and then I'd colour it in the computer. And so do you change the head like Dr Frankenstein? Very much like that. I do. Yeah, I feel like a doctor. Yeah, because that's the thing, you're in control. You can, you can play God, if you like, <laughs> when, you're, when, you're, when you're drawing. And you can create worlds. Exactly, you don't no, just have to draw It doesn't take seven what days. It can, yeah, you can make things up, you can change things, you can do anything you want. You're in control when you draw, it's amazing. And not in control sometimes, but those mistakes, that's all, all the fun. So tell us, Tom, how long have you been drawing? I've been drawing ever since uh, I was a small boy. I used to get up before school and I'd rip open the cornflakes packet and I'd draw my favourite superheroes with felt tip pens on the packets like Batman and Spider Man. And then my mum had nowhere to keep the cornflakes. That went on for no. quite a few years. So I've always drawn, and I just draw for fun, and draw pictures, and you draw pictures for other people, and give them some presents. Oh, so cheap presents, Tom. Uh, that can, <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, these days I use gold ink, so they're very, oh, very... Oh, I see, I see. I think if we both, go, if I go this way and Tom goes that way, like that, you oh. can see behind us on the wall, oh, yeah. these beautiful pictures are by Tom's dad. So Tom grew up with an artist dad at home, didn't you? But I didn't grow up with any writers at home. Um, but my mum and dad are both historians. My mum is a history teacher and my dad is, a, a, well, he, he doesn't work as a history teacher, but he's also a historian. And so I was lucky because all of my life I was told really fascinating facts about history and got taken to places like Scarabri, the Neolithic village in Orkney. I more wanted to go to Disney World, but I got taken to Scarabri and now I'm an adult. I'm glad because I can write books like Strong Brave 2, Great Scots Who Changed the World and How You Can Too. This is time to wave the book, Tom. Ah, yeah, sorry. So we hope that it's been interesting 
finding out a bit about, <laughs> don't do that, everybody will get seasick. Hope it's been interesting finding out about Strong Brave True, Great Scots Who Changed the World and How You Can Too, and how we created the book from this to this. Oh, we should have also said that the publisher did lots of work in the middle, lots of edit work. So even looking at this text here, the text changed little bits and it got tweaked and it made got made better and stronger so that it read faster and tighter. So it was a more interesting read. And then also the designer did all this beautiful layout, didn't he? Thomas. The designer is also called Thomas because not often people forget about what publishers do. And then once that all the files were ready, the publisher sent it off to be printed and then it came back and it went into the shops. So you can maybe get it at a library if your library is doing online uh, borrowing just now or maybe from a, an online shop if you would like to get hold of a copy. Um, and we hope that this has been interesting. Bye! Bye!